Well, hello there and welcome to this session of Winter Conference 2021. In this session, we're going to be talking about simple seed placement. My name is Bryce Baker. I'm the marketing manager here at Precision Planting. You know, you heard in an earlier session about the seed sensor and about the information and knowledge that that can provide to drive improvements in the way that our seeds are placed. You know, a seed sensor can give us information not just about the number of seeds per acre we're planting or the population, but also about singulation. Are we dropping one seed at a time or in the spacing that those seeds have? And no matter what crop we're planting, as you can see multiple crops here, we want to make sure that we're driving the most consistent stand that we possibly can. That consistent stand is going to drive improved yield, and it's that yield that we're after. And there's simple ways to make that happen. You know, as we think about getting better and improving, you know, in my personal life, there's, there's one thing that comes to mind that I probably should be doing. You know, this is probably where I should have been this morning uh, before winter conference. Probably should have gone to the gym, probably should have worked out. I know that there's health benefits to working out. I know that there's long life benefits to it. But when I think about getting to the gym multiple times a week and working out, there's a few words that come to mind. You know, the first one's discomfort. If I go from not really spending much time at the gym to hitting it hard, doing sit-ups, push-ups, bench press, and I'm going to be sore. I'm going to have sore back. Walking upstairs is going to be a challenge. It's just going to be difficult. Another thing that comes to mind is complexity. You know, my family, my wife and my kids, we kind of have our routine set. We have that wake up, get our kids fed. We get our oldest to school. I get to work. My wife spends time during the day with the littlest kids. We have our evening routine. And I'm going to have to probably upset that routine in some way for me to make time to get to the gym. And then the last one is just hardship. Uh, I function really well on about seven, eight hours of sleep a night. And I'm probably going to have to give some of that sleep up. So hopefully I'll sleep better if I start getting more activity. But, man, I don't know if it's worth it. And that's why at a gym we see signs that look like this. It takes dedication and hard work to constantly improve yourself. And that's true, and we believe that in life, that's the way it is. If we want to get better, we want to perform at a high level, it takes hard work. And so there's this thing that's called a dichotomy, and it's defined as a division or contrast between two things that are or are represented as being opposed or entirely different. And so for me, there's a dichotomy with this fitness. I can either choose comfort or physical fitness. I can't choose both. For me to get in better physical condition, it's going to take discomfort. But as we think about seed placement and trying to get that right, along with simplicity, we've been conditioned to believe as well that this is a dichotomy, that we can choose a picket fence stand or simple to use products, that we can't have both. And we're going to talk about that today and look at if that's true or if that's actually not true. You know, thinking about seed placement, there's really four areas to focus on. The first one is singulation. Am I planting one seed every time I want one seed? Not a skip, not a double. Along with that is population, the number of seeds per acre. I want that accurate on every row that I'm planting. Then there's spacing. Take those singulated seeds, and I want to have them equidistant, not closer than they should be, not farther apart. I want to hit the bullseye every time. And then lastly, it's just the timing of when we place our seeds in the field. We want that to be right. We want to get done so that we don't have acres unplanted. So we see a stand like this. It really doesn't matter if it's corn, as we see here, or whatever crop. But there's yield advantages. There's cost advantages and profitability advantages from getting that seed placement right and extremely accurate. It doesn't matter the crop. So what are those implications? Well, here's a study that shows that just a 4.5% increase in singulation performance up to almost perfect drives a 12.7 bushel per acre yield increase. Pretty significant. What about other crops? Soybeans. Here's a study. Planting singulated soybeans versus non across a wide variety of populations. We see about a 1.2 bushel per acre yield gain. Getting that perfection pays. And sometimes it's not necessarily in yield, but it's in cost. You know, here's a cotton comparison. On the left, we see an accurate cotton meter that's not overplanting. It's not planting extra seeds. It's costing us about $86.80 per acre in seed costs. That's what we wanted. On the right is a meter that's more traditional, and it doubles a lot, plants a lot of extra seeds. And we see it's costing almost $16 more per acre just in seed costs alone. So when we have an inaccurate meter, 
we see stands that look like this and we think, well, that's just kind of what we have to live with unless we're going to introduce a lot of complexity. And stands like this are created by meters that perform like what we see here, a meter that's sensitive to seed size or shape or just doesn't singulate well. Here we can see quite a bit of extra seeds in these cells. As this disc turns, those cells are pulling extra seeds, two or three on each one. That's going to cost us more money. That's going to drive our yields lower, and we're going to not be as profitable as we could have been. But to improve this, to improve the seed placement of this meter, we're going to have to adjust. We're going to have to do something that takes dedication and hard work to constantly improve. And you know what? I don't know if I want to do that. I don't know if you want to do that. Do we want to have that extra work that goes into getting it right? Or do we have to actually put in that extra work to improve? Traditional seed meters need continual adjustment to plant accurately, which leads to skips, doubles, and ultimately lost yield. V-set seed meters singulate seeds accurately without any adjustments, resulting in perfect seed placement throughout the field. So how does this V-set drive adjustment-free perfect seed placement? Well, let's look at a V-set meter and see how it performs. So we've got a V-set, got the two halves. On this side, we have the V-set cover. It's got the exit and a singulator. This half has a disc, a fragment knockout, and has the hub. So pretty simple. I want to focus on this singulator because that's the key to the adjustment-free accuracy. So this is a singulator, and this is our disc. Our disc is going to pick up seeds and just on holes, not cells. They're not cupped. The singulator just rides on the outside of the disc, and so as this disc turns, the singulator covers up part of the hole. So if we pull multiple seeds on to this disc before it hits the singulator, that's fine because we have enough vacuum to hold one seed on, but not enough space for more than one seed. So as the singulator encounters seeds, the extra ones fall off. By the time it gets through the singulator, we have one seed on every hole. Accurate singulation, and there's no adjustments needed to get this right per crop. I want to change crops, I change the disc, I change the singulator, I'm good to go. So I said that the V-set meter is a vacuum meter. And some of you may be sitting here and saying, yeah, well, I have a mechanical planter. I have a finger pickup planter, maybe. I don't have a vacuum planter. I can't use V-set. It's not true. Here we see an example of a farmer in central Illinois that had a finger meter planter, finger pickup. And they said, I want the improved accuracy and yield advantages that come from the improved singulation of a V-set. And so you can see here from their precision planting dealer, they were able to have installed vacuum blowers, a vacuum manifold, that black pipe across in front of the row units, the tubing and the hoses to put V-sets on and run that vacuum system. Still ran it with their traditional drive system, but they improved their singulation accuracy. Now, what does V-set look like as it works? Well, here we'll see a V-set in action with a mixed variety of corn, multiple hybrids, different seed sizes and shape. And here you see multiple seeds on that hole. And by the time the singulator encounters those seeds and they get to the last lobe, there's one seed on every hole even with mixed seed sizes, and then as they drop off down the seed tube, one seed on every hole, singulated seeds that are going to yield well. Well, what about other crops? What if we're not planting corn? Well, here we see cotton. You know that cotton seed's very expensive, very expensive. We don't want to overplant. So how does cotton work with a V-set? Well, the same way. This first lobe, you can see, encountering those seeds, the extra seeds fall off. By the time we get to the last lobe of the singulator, one seed on every hole, and we've got the seeds releasing very consistently right down the chute into the seed tube, one seed at a time, saving us seed costs because we're not overplanting. And then there's other crops like soybeans. We saw that soybeans had a 1.2 bushel advantage from being singulated. How do they work? Well, here's two varieties, two sizes mixed in the same seed lot here. And you can see the exact same thing happening. That singulator knocks off the extra seeds. There's enough vacuum to hold one seed, but not enough space for more than one. And as they drop right down the seed chute, one seed every single time. And so what are the results that can, we can expect with a meter that performs like this? Well, it's, it's perfection, like what we see here. We see every seed exactly where we wanted it, no skips, no doubles. But what if I'm not planting corn? Well, we saw cotton and soybeans, but what about other crops? You know, as we look right here at this display, you can see all the various discs 
that can go inside of a V-set along with singulators and fragment knockouts. And so a precision planting dealer can work with you to set up your meters to plant whatever crop it is that you want to plant accurately. Sunflowers, peanuts, milo, cotton, soybeans, corn, doesn't matter the crop, there's a setup here that can plant those seeds accurately. So we've seen that we've broken this dichotomy when it comes to seed singulation. We don't have to choose anymore. It's not picket fence stand or easy to use. It's simple to use and generating that picket fence stand. So the meter performs accurately, but what about a drive system that drives that meter? We need to make sure we space those seeds accurately, and the drive system performance really drives that. What we want from a spacing perspective in our fields is to hit the bullseye every time. If we're supposed to put a seed right here, we want to put that seed right here. It's kind of like when we're uh, target practicing. You know, here's two targets with different shot groupings. On the left side, it's a pretty terrible group. We missed the bullseye and missed it badly all around that target. But the shot group on the right, that's a pretty tight group. That's what we want to do with our seed spacing. Hit that bullseye over and over and over to drive accurate seed placement. But on the planter, we have a drive system that drives the meter. And if that thing's not in great shape and not turning the meter smoothly, it will affect our ability to hit this bullseye time after time after time. So maintenance is imperative to be done. And if it's not done, there's real cost to it. As we see right here, we've got a chain that I assume nobody here would miss getting this chain off the planter and putting a new one on. It's kinked, it's stiff, and this isn't gonna drive that meter smoothly. There's gonna be spacing errors that occur, bullseyes that are missed due to this chain. But what about other things on the drive system that can cause spacing errors? What about this hex shaft connection? At first glance, you say, okay, what's the problem? But if I watch the sprocket, it speeds up and then it slows down. It speeds up and then it slows down. And the reason is because the drive dogs between these two sh shafts are misaligned and they slide. They lope faster than slower, faster than slower. Now, hopefully this gets caught and fixed. But the reality is most of the planters I've seen in a shop, when maintenance is being done, they're not fully unfolded to where these drive dogs would be connected. They're typically folded or just partially unfolded. So this is one that may not be caught, and it's not actually affecting population, it's simply affecting spacing. So when I think about a mechanical drive system on a planner, I just see complexity. Now look at this picture, there's a lot of things that have to be done right in order for this drive system to turn smoothly and space seeds perfectly. You know, if I start on the left side, the air pressure in the airbag has to be right, the air pressure in the turf tire has to be right, all the sprockets can't be worn. Our idlers, tensioners, bearings, shafts, chains, all have to be in tip-top shape. And we can get them right pre-season, but there's no telling if a bearing will go out during the season or if there'll be problems during season. But what if it's all right? All these things are good to go. There's still inaccurates, inaccuracies that can occur, such as planting around curves. So this is in the US and Western Iowa. A lot of curves, a lot of hillsides. So planting these contours with this ground drive planter led to inaccurate population across the field. That's a problem. We want to have our population right. Population's wrong, and there's significant cost to it. Here's a study showing that that overpopulation happening on the inside of the planter, where that row unit is going slower and we're actually planting about a double population, if you take the lost yield from the increased population, and the increased seed cost, it's about a $370 per acre loss that's occurring. Man, that's a big deal. That's a problem causing us to lose profitability. So how do we fix it? You know, mechanical drive systems require costly and time-consuming maintenance. V-Drive is a maintenance-free electric drive system that lets you breeze through planting without the headaches of a mechanical drive system. So with V-Drive, this is the drive system on the planter. That previous drive system had 209 parts. Right here we see 16 motors that simply attach to a V-set meter with four Phillips screws and one electrical connection. Very simple, they simply just drive that meter on that row, give us accuracy. Let's look at a V-drive. Well here we see the half of the meter that has the disc. You know, it's just these four screws that attach the V-drive right to the V-set meter. And then 
we remove all the complexity of that mechanical drive system. Just have one of these motors on every row of the planter. And very simply, this gear just spins the outside of the meter. We have individual row control of population, it gives us swath control, it gives us that seed placement accuracy that we're after. But I know some of you are saying, uh, there's got to be more, more than four screws in an electrical connection. And you're right, there is. But that's where the Precision Planning Premier Dealer comes in. The dealers get your planner, do the installation of the wiring, the harnessing, the modules, and the 2020 in the cab. So when it's delivered back to you, they train you on how to use it. And all you have to worry about is the four screws and the one electrical connection. The rest is taken care of for you. So not only is that 209-piece drive system gone and replaced with the V-Drive motors, but you have swath control. As you see here, the swath control is saving seed by not overlapping. We have accurate population. Here's that same field in Western Iowa, planted two years later with V-Drive this time instead of that traditional mechanical drive system. You can see row by row that population is significantly more accurate. And it's not costing us money. That $370 that the overplanting cost is now right in line with the rest of the planter. So how easy is V-Drive to operate? Because you got to put an input in of how much population you want to put out on your field. Well, you do that through the 2020 monitor. That's going to be in the cab. That's going to be set up. And then what you have to operate is simply a button called V-Drive. Here's where you set your population. Right now we're planning 34,000. If I want to increase to 36,000, Simply push the plus 500 four times, the planter is going to start planting 34,000 or 36,000 seeds per acre after that adjustment. So we're breaking dichotomies between simple and picket fence stands and saying we can have both. What about the timing of when we plant our seeds? You know, if we're singulating well, spacing well, planting an accurate population, what about getting the seeds in the ground when it's go time? You know, the reality is that a lot of years in the past few seasons there's a lot of fields across the u.s across the globe whatever your planting season is that look like this and this is painful this is stressful this is nerve-wracking and you know using some dates that i'm familiar with living in central illinois we usually start planting about april 10th or april 15th so you can just you know you know what dates you start planting in your area but for us if this is march 10th not really a big deal. We got a month. As long as the rain shuts off, we'll be in great shape. We'll get started about that April 10th or 15th. But if this is May 15th, May 20th, well, we've had significant rain leading up to the May, May 10th or May 15th date. Probably don't have much in the ground. And all of a sudden, we're real nervous. We may not have put any seeds in the ground yet. And we're looking at this, and all of a sudden, the calendar and an insurance date is looming. We have to be ready to go. As I think about being ready to go, I think about a few books I've read recently um, on leadership from a, a few guys that were Navy SEALs were in the Iraq War. And you know, we can't control the weather, and these Navy SEALs couldn't control the enemy, or they couldn't control the intelligence that came in that told them when it was time to execute a mission. Do you know what they could do? They could plan, prepare, train, so that when it was time to execute the mission and that intelligence came in, they were ready and they could complete the mission well and in a timely fashion. And you know, I think about planting, really it's for us in the farming community, that's our mission. In planting season, we need to complete that mission well and in a timely fashion. And so while we can't control the weather, we can equip our planner. We can get the planner ready so that when it's go time, we complete that mission in a timely fashion. Because we know that if we're late and we can't get done or we're later in the calendar year, after the optimum, we lose yield. Here in a corn study, about 10 to, 10 to 11 bushels per week lost. Now the dates are gonna change based on where you're at, but the reality is once it's fit, once it's go time, if we're beyond that, we lose yield. Same way in soybeans, the dates may change and the yield may change, but once it's go time and we're late, we run the risk of not getting done or losing profitability through lost yield. Okay, so why not start earlier? Well. If we start earlier, we encounter this problem, right? Because it was wet, it wasn't fit. We don't want to push it too early. We run into these agronomic problems that we see here. So if I have this planter in my operation or whatever planter you have, and let's say it typically takes me 12 days to plant all my crop, 12 days. But sometime in the last year or two, 
I've only gotten eight days. I've only gotten eight good days. How can I overcome the difference of four days that I need? You know, most planting seasons have weather challenges that make it difficult to plant all of our fields in ideal conditions. SpeedTube is a seed delivery system that allows you to double your planting speed without sacrificing performance. You'll have a sense of accomplishment when the rain comes and your planter is already back in the shed. So how does SpeedTube allow us to get done in a quicker fashion? Well, I'll show you. <clears throat> Let's look at this SpeedTube. SpeedTube simply replaces the standard gravity drop seed tube that's in your planter. It works with a V-set and a V-drive, and it's simply gonna take the seed and deliver it from the meter to the ground and plant it accurately, space it accurately, regardless of what speed you're planting. So you speed up, it's gonna deliver the seeds accurately. You slow down, it's gonna deliver the seeds accurately. So SpeedTube allows you to plant faster, more acres per hour, more acres per day, fewer days that it takes to put your crop in. So in those years where you've got ponds in the fields leading up to when it's go time, you're ready to roll and you're able to complete that mission in a timely fashion. Here we see two planters. The planter in the foreground is a tr traditional standard planter. And you can see as it's planting a traditional speed, the planter in the background is gonna start planting. And the way it's equipped, it's delivering the seeds accurately. It's equipped to have consistent emergence, consistent germination, and consistent seed placement, even at that faster speed. So because of how it's equipped, it's actually doing a better job planting than that planter in the foreground that's planting slower. So the planter in the background is doing a great job with seed placement, but it's getting more acres per hour, more acres per day, fewer total days required to plant that crop. And so SpeedTube works for multiple crops. You know, soybeans, you wanna plant those typically earlier. A lot of studies show early planted beans work well. Well, you can get in, get them planted. Works for sugar beets, works for cotton. You know, in cotton being planted in the, in the south of the US or other countries across the world, a lot of times the concern there is not necessarily ponding as we're in drier environments, but it's having that moisture line creep too low and not being able to get the seeds in moisture and then having a poor stand from chasing moisture. We wanna put our seeds right here and being able to plant more acres per day when it's fit, gets more of those seeds right in the moisture where it'll germinate and emerge well. And of course then corn can be planted with a speed tube and this is where a lot of times we run into those flooded fields that we saw. And so with speed tube, running that system on your planter, there's not really a setup that you have to go do in the 2020 as far as I have to tell it what speed I'm planting. Your dealer takes care of that. You're all set up, ready to roll, and you just simply plant the speed that allows you to plant the number of acres per hour that you want, and speed tube maintains that accuracy. And so we're breaking a lot of dichotomies here with simple to use and picket fence stand rather than an or, but what's a little bit of proof that this is true? Well, when planter manufacturers across the world say, what technology do we wanna put on our planter in the factory? We've got over 25 of them choose precision planting products for seed placement and other technologies that go on their planter. You can see them across the world. They're looking to precision planting for that simple to use accurate technology. So you want to improve. You want to do the best that you can. You want to drive those yields high, drive those costs down, and set the stage for an awesome year. How do you do it? Well, I got two recommendations of a place to start. You know, the first one's pretty easy. Take one meter off your planter, take some seed, visit a precision planting premier dealer. What you see on this bench in this shop is a meter max ultra test stand, and precision planting premier dealers have one of these. Have them put your meter on here, stand there with them, see how your meters perform, see how they singulate, see how they space, make adjustments to it and see how the singulation and spacing changes. And then I challenge you, ask them to put a V-set meter on and run that same seed. And then make adjustments to the V-set and see what it takes to make the V-set perform poorly. You'd be hard pressed to get that to perform poorly. The second thing I would challenge you with comes with planter maintenance. You know, maintenance is so important, especially on row units and the drive system. And specifically on the drive system, we talked about, you know, on that 16-row planter, over the 200 parts that have to be in tip-top shape to get our accurate seed placement. Talk to a Precision Planting Premier dealer about their planter inspection services. They can inspect your drive system. They know the ins and outs of the things that typically go wrong that are missed. 
and they can help you make sure that drive system is ready to go. But in the meantime, you might decide that that's a complicated beast and you'd like to get a simpler drive system and that V-Drive is something that you want to add to your planter so that you're ready to roll with a simpler drive system for 2021. You know, as we've been together today, I haven't really thought of any ways that I can avoid the hard work and the dedication it's gonna take for me to constantly improve my physical fitness. I think the reality is that for me to get better, and maybe if you see me at Winter Conference next year, I'll look different, but it's gonna take some level of discomfort, it's gonna take complexity, and it's gonna take hardship. That's just the reality of getting better when it comes to my physical health. But when it comes to your planter and placing seeds, you make the choice to work with a precision planting dealer and they'll help you overcome any complexity you might run across and you no longer have a dichotomy. You no longer have an or. You don't have to choose picket fence stand or simple to use. You can choose a picket fence stand and simple to use technology to get your seed placement right.